right. Uh, so we're very happy to have the last lecture um, in Bianca Varai's series on rational points on varieties and the brouwer modern obstruction. OK. Uh, thank you again for the introduction. Is the mic OK in the back? Can you hear? Great. All right. And thank you, all of you, for attending for the third lecture. And I feel like you should give yourselves all a pat on the back, especially the grad students who have been here all three weeks <laughs> making it through all the courses. Um, OK. Um, so if this is my first lecture uh, you're attending, I'm just going to repeat that the work that I uh, did that's appearing in this talk and also my work preparing the talks was completed on the lands of the Coast Salish, Duwamish, Stillaguamish, and Suquamish nations. And we're currently on the lands of the East Shoshone and the Ute nations. OK, so uh, in lecture one, we started with this fundamental question, if you're given a variety, how do you determine the set of rational points? And we said, OK, well, we could search. We could just do a naive point search. But at some point, you want to know that you um, have found them all. So we started considering the extreme case where you're searching and searching, and you don't find any. And you want a way to prove that there's no rational points. And so over the last uh, two lectures, um, we learned about the brouwer modern obstruction and how you could, uh, with enough effort and luck, compute the Brouwer group and the brouwer modern obstruction. So say we've done that, and we determine that the Brouwer set is empty. OK, so where do we go from there? Um, well, I mean, depending on how you stumbled across this variety, that might be the end of the story for you. You might have wanted to know. Are there any elliptic curves over Q with this Galois representation? And you computed this set of points, and that tells you no. And then you can plug that into whatever you needed for and continue with your progress. Um, but you might have wanted to know the rational points because you were just interested generally in the arithmetic of this variety uh, x. And well, one thing we know from varieties is that they're not just their set of uh, Q rational points, particularly when the set is empty. There's more information contained in X than the set of uh, Q rational points. And so if you are interested in the arithmetic of X, you really want to understand all of the arithmetic of X. So that includes knowing sort of, OK, ideally in my dream scenario where I can solve every math problem that ever existed, I want to know all of the Q-bar points and the Galois actions on them and what's happening and what they look like. OK, so what I want to um, think about today is a question in a different direction, which is, can we leverage the information that we've learned about x over our ground field and try to extract some information about what's happening over extensions. OK, so we can't, if the set of points is empty, you won't be able to know. Um, well, there's a lot you might not be able to know. But can we, can we leverage the work we've already done? Because remember, not only do we know the set is empty, we proved that it's empty by computing arithmetic information about x. We computed the set of adelic points on x. We computed the Brouwer group. We computed the brouwer monin set. So in discovering that this set was empty, we learned some information already. And I want to see whether we can, we can leverage that information. OK. And um, so as I've said through the lectures, the set of rational points over so over a global field, this is a fundamentally difficult problem. And so it's very hard for us to study that problem directly. So really what I mean is, can we use what we know about the Brouwer set over k to study what happens for the Brouwer group over extensions? This gives us like some approximate information on what's happening with the global points. It's not the whole story, but it gets us started. OK. so. What we saw last lecture is this philosophy that Brouwer classes really want to obstruct uh, rational points. That if you're looking at a family of varieties 
over some moduli space or some parameter space that parameterizes them, if you can have non-trivial Brouwer classes, then we expect that across that family, there should be members in that family where abs they obstruct. So here we're looking at a slightly different situation. We have a fixed variety. We're not varying over moduli or varying over parameter space. We have our, our fixed chosen x that we have under a microscope and are trying to study. And then we want to know what's happening as we vary extensions. So as we go up from k to bigger extensions, what is happening to the Brouwer classes? So the results that I mentioned, um, I mean, you can maybe view them in this context, but they were, they were really sort of ready-made, built for this context where you're varying in moduli rather than varying the field. So now I want to look at this philosophy again and see, OK, does it still hold when we vary over extensions? And if it does, in what ways does it hold? OK, yeah, so that's, that's what I just said. OK, so um, this is a more recent line of inquiry, studying what happens over extensions, now that we have sort of uh, are more skilled, more experienced about looking what, what, over a fixed field. Now we have, now we're, we're starting to look at this question of what happens when you're varying an extension. So the results are newer, but we do still have some results that show that this philosophy does still hold. So there's a recent paper of Liang, and the way I've stated it, it's using um, a result of Kolotelan, Sansuk, and Swinnerton Dyer from 87. And this says that if you have any number field k, so you just fix your field, so maybe the particular variety that you are looking at, this doesn't hold true for, but there is a variety, uh, a Chatelet surface, which was um, featured in the, in the exercises from last yesterday's, Tuesday's lectures. So there's this Chatelet surface over that field and a quadratic extension that over k, the Brouwer uh, elements don't do anything, but over this extension, they carve out a proper subset. Okay, so even if Brouwer classes don't do anything over k, when you go up, sort of gives them more power that they can obstruct. Yes? Oh, sorry, yes, this last one, I see you now. This part, this should be V of AL. Apologies, copy and paste error. <laughs> Thanks for catching it. Okay, any other questions? Yes? So Chatelet surface is a, uh, it's just a particular type of surface. On the next, very next slide, I'll write an equation for it. So it was in the, ex the very, very long, probably intimidating exercise from lecture two yesterday. So it's a certain type of conic bundle. Uh, so it's a, a surface that maps to P1 um, where the fibers are all conics and there's four geometric uh, singular fibers and it's even a little bit more special than just that general case. But it's a type of surface where we understand the arithmetic very well. So in this uh, paper from 87, Colitano, Kolutlen, Sensuk, and Swinnerton Dyer proved that the Brouwer Manen is, is the only obstruction uh, to the existence of rational points for, for these types of surfaces. They actually proved this stronger statement that the k rational points are delicately dense in the Brouwer set. Um, so since we, we understand so much about these surfaces, they're often a good test case for our results. More questions? Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit uh, farther, but then I'm gonna pause longer next time. So be prepared. Okay, so another result in this direction is very uh, recent, uh, just on the archive um, this summer by Masahiro Nakahara and Sam Rovin. Uh, so Nakahara appeared at the end of last talk um, when we were talking about these capturing Brauermann and obstructions. He's my postdoc, he's on the job market in the fall. So, so 
So this is um, an example of a Chatelet service. So they study these Chatelet services. And now, remember, the last result of Liang, you fixed a K, and then he found a Chatelet service. So here we start with our Chatelet service. And I'm going to, I will say what the condition is, but sort of for most Chatelet surfaces, you always can find an extension where the Brouwer set is strictly smaller. So it might not happen over your ground field, um, but typically, okay, so one of the conditions will imply that the Brouwer group is non-trivial. <laughs> that's that's a, a necessary thing. But as we go up the tower, you should expect that that Brouwer classes can cause obstructions. So if you're interested, this is the full condition. So F is going to be the splitting field of this polynomial P of T. And uh, if there's a place over that splitting field where either this A is negative, oh, there we go, or uh, if it's a finite place, A is a non-square and your Chatelet surface has bad reduction, um, then you will always have an extension like this. Okay. Okay, so just as we saw last time, because these Brouwer classes, they just like want to obstruct if there's possibly any possible way for them to do so, this is again too strong of a question that we're asking. So we should ask for a little bit less control about not describing the entire Brouwer set as we go over all the extensions. That seems like a lot of information. Um, but can we get, can we ask for something a little bit less? And so following the same theme um, from Tuesday, it's sort of a much stronger thing to ask when the Brouwer elements completely eliminate all the adelic points. So instead of asking to describe the Brouwer set over all possible extensions, which seems like a daunting task even to write down the answer for, let's try to understand the extensions where the Brouwer set is, okay, either trivial, <laughs> either empty or not empty. You know, <laughs> you could ask for either one and we'll, we'll consider both. Okay, so this is the, the motivating question that I want to consider today. Any questions for me? I promised I would pause longer, so I have to follow through. Yes? Yeah, that will be one of our one of our questions. So the Brouwer group can change as you go over an ex extension. So we'll see that, as I said, this is a newer line of inquiry. So we're at earlier stages. So most of the results are where the Brouwer, Brouwer group doesn't change too much, or this Brouwer quotient doesn't change too much as you go over extensions. Um, but yeah, that's part of part of the thing we have to figure out. Right, so the, um, the question was, okay, there were two parts. The first one that I answered was, can the Brouwer group change the Brouwer quotient as you go up in extensions, which I said that can happen. And then the second part was, so you could also ask a different question, a slightly weaker question, instead of just asking about the adelic points orthogonal to the entire Brouwer group, you could ask just if they're orthogonal to the image of the Brouwer group that you get over K, the, the image of the restriction map. And that, that is a very good question, and indeed a, a first, first step question, and that will come up in the talk. So great. Yes? Um, no, I think it can get, uh, okay, I don't know if there's an example that's written down that shows that it gets bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller, but that theoretically I would expect that to happen. So 
Um, we saw that there are these, we have this filtration of the Brouwer group. We have Brouwer 1, mod Brouwer 0, which is an algebraic Brouwer, Brouwer group that's killed over the algebraic closure. And so when that is finite, that part you definitely expect to get often smaller over extensions. You can take the extensions that kill that, that whole Brouwer group. Um, but this, the transcendental part, Brouwer mod Brouwer 1, those are really, we should think of those elements as those are elements that want to live over the algebraic closure, and then sometimes you're lucky and they descend to your ground field. So certainly as you go up the tower, you expect more and more of those to, to appear. So yeah, it, it's not uh, monotone. Great questions. Yes? X here is defined over little k. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. I yes. I like s decided to switch halfway through from <laughs> k to q somewhere, and I didn't check check all the things. So um, yeah, apologies. So here, this here, you could either think of this as l over over k, or you can just set k equal to q, and then everything will be fine. Thanks for catching that. OK. So uh, what is the first um, step into this direction? Well, there's this very nice lemma, which in this generality was observed by Wittenberg. So uh, in a joint paper with Kreutz, which will come up again, we had a couple of consequences of this lemma, which we proved in different ways. And we sent our paper to Olivier, and he said, isn't this all a consequence of this very nice, uh, more general, yeah, more general statement. Um, so, and that is indeed true. So if you have any extension, and over that extension you take a subgroup of the Brouwer group, the k points over that extension that are orthogonal to this b, it always contains adelic points over your ground field that are orthogonal to the co-restriction of those Brouwer classes. Okay, and so this has uh, two really important consequences. One, if you take B to be the full Brouwer group over an extension, then you know that if you have non-empty Brouwer set over your ground field, it can never become empty over an extension. Okay, and this should like, <laughs> fit with what we, <laughs> we hope should happen, um, and it does indeed happen. But it also tells us, um, because of restriction co-restriction, if you look at torsion uh, that has a particular order, then any adelic point over your ground field over an extension will be um, orthogonal to those elements uh, obtained from your ground field of a certain order. So I think this already shows like there should be some things that we can say, right? The functoriality of the Brouwer group and the way it's defined does give us something sort of just for free. When we know enough information about what's happening over little k, we get information about what's happening over some extensions. Oh, why does I keep losing this? Okay. Okay, so let me just explain uh, this lemma um, because it is, yeah, very nicely functorial. So if you have alpha in the Brouwer group of K and you have this local point, maybe I should have labeled it XV, but just for a particular place V, so then we can just pull back that map and we can view it as giving us uh, a point over sort of every, um, every place lying over V. Okay, and then it's just sort of uh, purely functorial statement that you'll find in this recent Brouwer group book of Kolotelen and Skorobogatov that if I uh, pull back along X, the co-restriction of alpha, that's the same as if I first pulled back along Y and then co-restricted down. Okay, and so sort of this should make you feel like, oh yeah, surely, this can prove um, the lemma above, and indeed you just sort of trace through 
the pairing, and everything works out. OK, so that's great. So as a corollary from this, from the first in particular statement that I said, if you have non-empty Brouwer set over your ground field, oh, sorry, what should I? Oh, oh my goodness, this has many typos. OK, so then the set of things where this is non-empty, let's just do this L over K. OK, you know what? I think I'm sure that I copy and pasted this set onto many slides. So we're just going to set k equal to q. <laughs> That's uh, OK, yeah, and this is supposed to be, OK, I did something. This is supposed to be a not equals. So if you have non-empty Brouwer set over your ground field, then every extension has non-empty Brouwer set. So you just like. We just completely answered this question. It's just all field extensions. OK, so from this, clearly the case that we need to do any work in is the case when you have a Brouwer monon obstruction over your ground field. OK, and so if you have a Brouwer monon obstruction over your ground field, it really breaks into sort of two questions. We're asking over which extensions must this brouwer monon obstruction persist? So when I say that, I'm thinking that this means that x of a l brouwer still remains empty. So that's the brouwer monon obstruction persisting. And over which extensions can you, uh, must the brouwer monon obstruction vanish? OK, so I'm going to start with the second question. When it vanishes, and those should be extensions well, where we can possibly gain points. OK, so first, let's look at this. Um, one of the other parts of the lemma that came up, which at the end told us that, OK, if I have adelic points over my ground field, then those are orthogonal to a certain subgroup of the Brouwer group upstairs. They're orthogonal to the adelic points that are the restriction of those elements who have order dividing the degree of the extension. OK. So if I have adelic points, and if this subgroup captures the brouwer monon obstruction, so meaning that if the Brouwer set is, is empty, then I can be already detect it here then that immediately tells us that uh, the Brouwer set upstairs is not empty. OK, so, so what we want to try to do is understand, OK, are there any cases where we know that this happens, this restriction uh, captures the Brouwer mountain obstruction? OK, and so what I want to do just first at the beginning is just see, OK, what are some, like, known results that are already out there that we can apply to this problem and see what's happening. OK, so this is the, the situation that we, we know that we're in. So here's an example corollary that we get from this statement, just assembling sort of basic things that are already known. So if you have a conic bundle over projective space, so that where the fibers are uh, conics and the generic fiber is smooth, um, and you assume that it has adelic points, well then, you don't get it for free for every, every extension, but if you avoid some fixed finite extension, so, that's, so you avoid this fixed finite extension, so then for all even degree extensions, which are linearly disjoint from this fixed one, you immediately get that you have non-empty Brouwer set. And for conic bundles like this, we, uh, it's conjectured that brouwer monon is the only obstruction, and there are um, conditional results in this direction. So this should give us an idea um, where we get points. Yes, question? I mean that it has adelic points. This means x of ak is non-empty. 
Great question. Yeah. So that, that question was, what is locally soluble? Really, I should write everywhere locally soluble, but it didn't fit on the line. <laughs> yes? Sorry? What do I have to join to small k to? OK, so really what's happening here is um, if you're away from this finite extension, OK, now I'm trying to think whether I should really put p1 here. If you're away from this finite extension, then um, the restriction map uh, generates the Brouwer quotient over the extension. So really what is happening is the question is whether we get this condition. And if what's happening in this case is that if you have L over K linearly disjoint, then this restriction actually generates the Brouwer quotient. And I am entirely confident of that if the N is one and I'm like having trouble thinking through the whole argument when N is uh, higher dimensional. But that's what goes into this argument. OK, so let me just first show you like a few more results in this direction, and then we'll come back to whether we should think of this as a surprising statement or not. OK, but I'm just going to show you that it has very similar forms. OK, now instead of a conic bundle, let me take a locally soluble cubic surface. Then again, I have this finite extension that I have to avoid. And then for all extensions that are linearly disjoint for this, and where 3 divides the degree of the extension, then I get that the Brouwer set is not empty. And this is just uh, exactly applying the swinnerton dyer result that I mentioned on Tuesday, that the 3 torsion of the Brouwer group captures the brouwer monon obstruction. And again, if you're disjoint from this fixed finite extension, this restriction will generate the 3 torsion uh, of the Brouwer quotient over over the extension. Yes? Oh, great. Uh, yes, the existence of big K is constructive. So in this case, K, you can take K to be, you can take it to be smaller than this, but at least you can take K to be the field of definition of the 27 lines on the cubic surface. So like, it's not like, Q would join square root 2, but <laughs> you have to do some work to get it, but it's completely constructive. Yes. OK, and then another one in this direction, if we have a locally soluble quartic del Pezzo surface, then again from, um, well, I guess this isn't, just from the classification of Brouwer groups, we know the Brouwer quotient is completely two torsion. And so again, away from this fixed finite extension, if L over K is linearly disjoint, then you get this non-empty. For every even degree extension, you get this non-empty Brouwer set. OK, so for certain types of varieties, so this often works if the Picard group uh, is torsion free and if the Brouwer group is completely algebraic and either the M torsion is known to generate the Brouwer quotient or you have some classification result that shows that it captures. But like, there's many things known in the literature that you could assemble to prove a statement like this, where you fill in the different types of things. OK, so what I want to spend a little bit of time on is just talking about whether, whether this is surprising or not. Uh, and it, it sort of depends on the, the strength of what you got for the M. So I'm going to do two extreme cases. I'm going to do the conic bundle case and then the, the quartic del Pezzo surfaces case. OK. So for this conic bundle, we're saying something about what happens with even degree extensions. So it's not so surprising that we should get a lot of points over even degree extensions, right? Because I have a bunch of conics, and conics have a bunch of points over even degree extensions. But what kind of extensions do we get, and how much control do we have over them? So if you take your point on projective space, then the fiber is a conic. Um, and 
You can use this, well, basically we can completely describe if you have a given conic over which even degree extensions you get points. You just have to have a certain uh, condition at finitely many places. So using, using the information we know about conics, then you can show that if you have adelic points over your ground field, you can find points over every uh, even degree extension that approximates a finite set of local conditions. Okay, so for any finite set of places, you can give me whatever even degree extension you want, and then I can find um, I can find a global point over over that extension. Okay, this is not obvious from what I've just said. You need to do a little bit more work, but it's not it's not too too intense. So, on the one hand, this second argument is better because we get actual global points. In the first argument, we only get a non-empty Brouwer set. But um, the second argument, even degree extensions approximating any finite set of local conditions, is a smaller set, a possibly smaller set of fields than the ones we get in the top. In the top, it really says you should get every even degree extension that's linearly disjoint from this fixed one. Okay, so it's not too surprising, but it, it's a little bit more than you can get um, through other methods. Okay, now let's look at the quartic del Pezzo service case. So this one is a little bit different. So quartic del Pezzo surfaces are uh, intersections of two quadrics in P4. So it's very easy to get degree four points, but it's not very obvious that you should get degree two points. And in fact, if you work over arbitrary fields, there's, well, you can show there's no general construction of quadratic points because you can write down del Pezzo surfaces, quartic del Pezzo surfaces over like fields of higher transcendence degree that have no points over a quadratic extension. So there's no like easy geometric way to get these quadratic points. So already this is telling us something a little bit more uh, than we might expect. However, if you have adelic points, then you can use those adelic points to view this uh, del Pezzo surface as a double cover, as birational to a double cover of P2. And then that gives us a way to make quadratic points, right? I, I just take a rational point on the base and I take this degree two cover. This is very similar uh, to the ideas that we saw coming up in uh, Wittenberg's lectures. I don't understand why this is happening. Okay. I'm just gonna hold these in. Okay, so, um, and this is over an odd degree extension that you get this to be this double cover, but okay, I don't know what happened. Um, does anybody can somebody just check that that plug is all the way in? Maybe something got loosened. Okay, uh, it's possible we're gonna be switching to a board talk. Okay, maybe I should just uh, start doing that and someone could potentially help me <laughs> get, get something to show up. Okay, let me see where I was. Okay, so I think I was saying, so for a quartic del Pezzo surface, if it's everywhere locally soluble, you do have some construction of quadratic points, but you don't have much control over what points you're getting. So the, 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 already the example corollary is, um, is giving us something much more than we know in other cases. Okay, but still, the existence of adelic points 
like over your ground field is helping us a lot in these situations. So now I want to turn to this question. What if you have no adelic points over your ground field? This is the question. OK, so if, so to show that you have a non-empty Brouwer set, uh, you need to construct points. Right, this is like a, the fundamental difficulty in showing that we have rational points is like we often can't just conjure them out of thin air. You have to like do something with them. And especially to show that I have non-empty Brouwer set, I need to exhibit some adelic point over L, thank you, um, that has, that is orthogonal to the Brouwer group. And if you have no adelic points over your ground field, you just have less points to start with that you're given for free to try to like modify and work with. OK, and also, when you're doing this, computing the Brouwer group is still hard. OK, so I have sort of like brushed this under the rug, but I didn't suddenly have an epiphany since Tuesday that makes me like a much, uh, much better at computing these Brouwer groups and Brouwer quotients. Um, so when I'm treating these questions, I'm just going to work in the, in the cases where we where we understand the Brouwer group better. So where our lack of general method is not uh, hampering us, we can just use one of the many papers that I um, exhibited. OK, so. OK, so I'm just going to show some results in this direction. These are harder to prove, so I'm not going to give a sketch of the proof, but just to show you what we can do. OK, so uh, Sam Rovin, who was my PhD student, uh, he showed that if you have a conic bundle, then you can show, regardless of whether it has adelic points over your ground field or not, you can show that for all quadratic extensions, the um, Brouwer set that you get from the Brouwer group of k, so that was from Zev's question earlier, just that part, that's non-empty as soon as you have adelic points over L. OK, so the Brouwer elements from K cannot cause any obstructions over these extensions. OK, and if you have a particular type of conic bundle, this special one known as a Chatelet surface, then we can actually do even better. It's not just quadratic extensions. It's all extensions of even degree. So the, the Brouwer group from K cannot obstruct, cannot obstruct uh, adelic points. And um, based on what I said, so for Chatelet services, the Brouwer group is purely algebraic. And so, um, wait, something. OK, sorry. Show navigator. This is so weird. I'm having the same thing that Isabel had. Oh, here we go. OK. It's coming. So uh, if you want to upgrade this to studying the full Brouwer set, then what you have to do is avoid this fixed finite extension. But then you get um, that actually the whole Brouwer set can never obstruct adelic points. OK. So this is much, much stronger uh, than the results that I was saying before. Oh, is there a question? Yes. No, you don't have equality, and we can't hope for, and in fact, Rovin and um, Nakahara and Rovin prove that you often don't have equality. So the, the Brouwer set can be strictly smaller and it often will be strictly smaller than the set of adelic points, but it can't be completely empty. 
So it, uh, yeah, so sorry, when I'm saying it cannot obstruct the idyllic points, I'm saying it cannot completely obstruct them. It can't obstruct the existence of rational points. Thank you, that's a, a good clarifying question. Okay, so, uh, and now, wait, what is happening? Oh my God, okay. <laughs> Let's just skip. There we go. Okay, so now let's look at the quartic um, del Pezzo surfaces case. So remember, this is when we have no known construction of having any quadratic points. So we shouldn't expect something as strong. Robin was proving over all of these quadratic extensions, all of these even degree extensions, we get, we get points. Here, even just getting some quadratic point uh, would be good. So first, in joint work with Kreutz, we prove that locally, you always get quadratic points. So over any local field, there's always a quadratic extension where you obtain points. And we can do it almost always over k. So <laughs> there's one case that we uh, can't do. Um, this is even more restrictive than we need, but I didn't want to write the exact assumption. Um, but we do show for many types of these families, there is a quadratic extension where you have non-empty Brouwer set. Okay, and so we should, should have global points over that extension. Okay, something weird is happening. Okay, so one thing that I think this, these results lead to, which I would really like to know the answer, um, so one is, are there always quadratic extensions? So here we've done extensive computations um, in the case that we can't cover to try to like example searching to try to find one where you don't get these quadratic points. We have yet to find one. So I think maybe you do always get quadratic points over global fields, but um, we haven't proved that yet. And then one thing that's unclear to me is what is special about del Pezzo surfaces? Because we really, we should expect only quartic points. And this is just wild speculation on this question, just to like throw people out there. I would guess there are families of varieties where the Brouwer quotient is completely two torsion, and, but you still can't find quadratic points. But maybe, maybe not. So I think this hasn't really been looked at because the examples <laughs> that we know of where the Brouwer quotient is completely two torsion are conic bundles where you definitely always get quadratic points and quartic del Pezzo surfaces where it's unclear. So I think it's just we haven't looked uh, further. Okay, any questions so far? Yes? Yeah, so we can actually prove something stronger than this. We can prove that if there is not a point over the unique unramified quadratic extension, then you get a point over every single ramified quadratic extension. And experimentally, it seems that you, you can fail to have a quadratic point, fail to have point over at most one quadratic extension, but I don't know how to prove, how to prove that in general. Well, we don't. More questions? Okay. So, so that's over which extensions must the Brouwer modern obstruction and vanish. And just in the last uh, few minutes, I just want to say a few words about which extensions uh, the Brouwer modern obstruction must persist. Which again is this question that if you know that you have empty Brouwer set over your ground field, then you still have empty Brouwer set over your extension. Now thinking about this, intuitively this should be a much more difficult property to hold, right? Normally the way we make points is by taking extensions. So as we take extensions, we expect there to be 
global points over those extensions, so then that would give us non-empty Brouwer set. So it should be harder to guarantee that the Brouwer monon obstruction persists. And probably it's only reasonable to expect persistence of the Brouwer monon obstruction for geometrically simple varieties, for varieties that are well behaved. So the Brouwer monon obstruction persisting should be telling us something about um, about the relationship between the property of having rational points and having zero cycles of degree one. And for general varieties, those concepts should be far apart, but sometimes, sometimes they're more closely related. Okay, so what can we say in this case? Well, so what is one <laughs> very geometrically simple variety? Well, that's quadrics. Um, and for Brouwer groups of quadrics, they're just trivial, so the brouwer monon obstruction doesn't even tell you anything. Um, but Springer's theorem tells us that quadrics have points over your ground field if and only if they have them over an odd degree extension. Uh, so then for free from this, you get, okay, well, you get that you have a local point if and only if you have a local point over some odd degree extension, and so from that you can prove that you have adelic points over k if and only if you have adelic points over some odd degree extension, and since the Brouwer set is non-trivial, uh, so this is like a check mark example. Oh, okay. Well, revealed the punchline, but okay. So quadrics are good. For quartic del pezzo services, we get the same property about that they have a point if and only if they have it over an odd degree extension. This is a you have to add something ingredient into Springer's theorem, but together with a theorem due to Ammer and Brumer, we know that this st statement is true. We have a rational point if and only if you have a point over some odd degree extension. And so then you can ask, does that imply persistence of the brouwer monon obstruction? And in this case, it's, it doesn't directly follow from Springer and Ammer Brumer because uh, the Brouwer group can be non-trivial. But this does follow um, from work of Kolitelen and Coré. Uh, and the classification of the Brouwer group by Swinnerton Dyer. Okay, so that, there you get, it still persists. So, okay, what's another geometrically simple variety? So we could look at cubo, cubic surfaces. So in this case, we, ha there's a conjecture of a similar property from Springer's theorem, but it is now a conjecture, no longer a theorem. So this is a conjecture of Castles and Swinnerton Dyer that a cubic surface should have a point if and only if it has a point over some extension of degree co-prime to three. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess, okay, I said it as ex existence, but then, um, okay, I think what I wrote is correct. <laughs> So then you can ask the same thing about the Brouwer set. So does the, the Brouwer monon obstruction persist over extensions of degree uh, co prime to three? And over local fields, uh, Coray proved this in his thesis that um, the Castles and Swinnerton and Diacring conjecture does hold for local fields. So we immediately from this, we know that you have uh, adelic points over K, if and only if you have adelic points over some extension of degree co-prime to three. And then in joint work with Carlos Rivera, we proved that the brouwer monon obstruction does persist uh, for this extension. So there are some cases where you can prove the brouwer monon obstruction persists. I think it's, it's less likely that it holds um, in general, but it's still nice to know these cases. Okay, so I'll just end uh, with uh, sort of summarizing what I think of as the main themes that I was trying to get across. So the arithmetic of X, when we want to understand the arithmetic of X, it's much more than just understanding the points over the ground field. Really, we'd like to know something that's happening as you go over extensions. And then so far, what I've shown, but as I've said, this is a, a newer line of inquiry they maybe suggest that as you go up in extensions, 
it's easy for the Brouwer set to be strictly smaller than the set of adelic points, but it's harder for it to be cut all the way down to the empty set. Okay, this is like a very <laughs> soft, <laughs> soft speculation of what is possibly happening. But so far, I mean, as I've said, all the things that I've shown you, all the results that I've shown you, they're only for geometrically rational surfaces. So this is a very, when you think of the all possible varieties, this is just giving you a very small um, slice. Uh, so we don't really know what's happening. So what I'd just leave you with is uh, we should explore this more. And I hope some of you will take this up. Okay, thank you very much.